Now we want to store the company holidays in a table so that we can use it when we calculate the number of working days. So we will start typing in here the date and name. And so this would be the, you know, the holiday. So let's say holiday. And then we're going to type a couple of examples so that we, I like to create something which has some data in it before we store it as a table. So let's say I do something like this. And then I'm going to select all these cells. And then I'm going to press Control T for our table and make sure that the My Table has headers is checked. Press OK. So now we have the date and the holiday clearly listed for us. There we go. OK, so now we have the table. So I, we can change the table design as we need. And then we would also want to make sure that the table is named correctly. So instead of table 2, I would name it as table T underscore HOLS for holidays. And then another thing which we will learn here is we can create lists lists or named ranges. So for example, I'm going to select these two cells because that's my list of holiday dates right now. So I'm going to select these two. And then I want to be able to, you know, I should go to the home ribbon. So once I select these two, I want to name this as the list of holidays. I know the entire table is the table of holidays, which may have other information. But specifically dates is what we will be using in our formulas later. So I want to make sure I have a uh, name for that. So I've selected these two. And then you can go in here. And then in the name box, you can type in L underscore HOLS. This means that it's the list of holidays. I'm going to press enter. And now we have created that as a list of um, holidays. In order to see all the lists that we have created, go to formulas, name manager. So control F3 is the shortcut. So this is where you will be able to find all the lists. Um, the they call named ranges. It's nothing but you're giving a name to a range of cells. So that's what's managed in the name manager. Even though this is the first one we named as a list of holidays, you can see that the previous two tables, this one and then this one we created, are also automatically added to the name manager because they're also named ranges. So Excel will automatically add them here uh, when we create a table. And you can see that L underscore HOLS refers to the specific set of dates. When we add more dates, it'll automatically expand. That's the beauty of this. Because you can see that it refers to T underscore HOLS, which is the table of holidays, but specifically the date column. So if you add more uh, records to this table, all the new dates that you enter will automatically become part of the L underscore HOLS list. And this is why I like it. So because you can now let the user choose how many days they have as holidays, there's no limit to how many holidays that company can have. Now you have built something that any company can use according to their needs. And uh, so this is anyway the recommended method for, uh, for you to create a list of holidays. And so I'm going to close. If you want to create a new name instead of just typing it in the box if you want to do it differently. So you can still go to name manager and press new and then you can give a name here and then you can choose any of the cells if in case you want to create another list. You can go through this approach of creating a new named range. Okay, that's all we would need to set up this table of holidays. Now, this pretty much completes our first sheet where we have entered the settings. So I'm going to rename the sheet as settings. And that's it. So we have completed the first important step of setting up the settings and all these vacation types and weekends and holidays for the company. And now we will move on to the next input section, which is to store the list of employee names.